So we, I think we're ready to start here. So uh, thanks for attending. Uh, this is the Scality presentation. We're going to talk about uh, storage for OpenStack, uh, scalable storage to address all the, the wide demands and requirements of uh, the software-defined data center and OpenStack. Uh, I'm Paul Spachali. I'm the director of product management for Scality. I'm joined by Giorgio Regni, who's the CTO and founder. Uh, and we'll try to make this interesting and make it kind of a, a dual uh, presentation. So I'll take a little bit of the intro, and then I'll have Giorgio come in with uh, some of the technical tidbits about how we integrate with OpenStack. Um, and then at the end, we'll leave uh, a little room for questions. So let me kind of start this off. So data storage, why do we need a different architecture and a different approach for OpenStack? And I think the key thing for us to recognize is that the demands are changing dramatically. Uh, I think one of the things that we're going to start seeing now as the software data center evolves into OpenStack is that we're going to need storage systems that are much more agile and are able to handle diverse types of data. So I think what we've seen in the industry is systems that can address block storage adequately or file storage or object storage. But what about creating a system that can merge these capabilities and provide a very scalable, durable foundation for multiple workloads, multiple applications talking to the storage, and really provide this sort of agile layer that can address these changing requirements. So one of the things that we're starting to see, and I think we've all heard here, is that people are planning OpenStack deployments that really address a wide spectrum of workloads. We're going to see hundreds and thousands of VMs in these clouds. Uh, they're going to want access for storing the VMs themselves, the VM images, but also the application data. Uh, so that's really the challenge here is to design a system that can address that with the durability, but also to do it at the economies that the cloud demands, right? So we have to sort of figure out a way to do this uh, in a very cost-efficient manner. OK, so we think that the right answer here is software-defined storage, right? So we've all heard the term software-defined data center. Uh, we know that uh, Nova represents uh, the compute side of the equation in OpenStack. Uh, there's Neutron for software-defined networking. Uh, but really, we need that storage foundation that sort of complements the, uh, the triumvirate there in those three components of the stack. So the way that we've addressed this is through the Scality Ring. Uh, it's a software approach to doing scale-out storage. Uh, so the idea is that it's entirely hardware agnostic. So this gives you freedom to select the hardware platform tier that you desire that's most optimal for your needs. You might choose highly dense servers for an archiving application. Uh, you might choose higher performance servers if you have uh, more high IOPS demands. So that's the hardware layer that you get to choose and you get to scale out. We lay on top of that. And what do we provide? We provide a very scalable architecture uh, that has a routing protocol to be able to do fast storage and fast retrieval of millions and billions of objects. As you run out of resource, you're able to add more uh, resource on the back end to complement that. Uh, on top of that, we layer a, a variety of data protection schemes. So one of the approaches that's been taken in the industry is that every time you store an object, you have multiple replicas. And that's one of the policies that we can enable. And in fact, the application can choose the class of service. So you can say, I want to have two replicas, or perhaps I want even more. I want four replicas. Uh, the other approach that's being taken now is erasure coding. Uh, erasure coding is an optimal data strategy, data protection strategy for larger data. So if you need to store image data or video data or large documents, uh, this ends up being a much more cost-effective, lower overhead approach to storing this data with high durability. So the ability to protect against multiple failures in the system. So the system really provides those as choices, as policies, uh, and lets the application make the right determination for how to store these things. On top of that, then we provide this set of connector interfaces, which provides the application connectivity to the storage system. And as we've said before, we see a variety, right? So most of today's legacy applications are going to be file-based. So doing things over NFS or SMB from the Windows side, these are very common mechanisms. And those are the ones that we support as well as local uh, file system type adapters over things like Fuse. Uh, newer style object applications, so REST APIs, right? This is sort of the today's scalable, uh, very simple address addressing mechanism for putting objects and retrieving objects out of, a, out of a storage system. So we have a number of uh, object connectors. The one that we're going to talk about here is the Swift connector, specifically for OpenStack. And then also VMs. We need to be able to store our VM images and our VM data stores in a storage system. Uh, and really to do this for the class of virtual machines that are sort of 
uh, the bulk of the demands, right? The 80% of our VMs that don't need super high-end uh, IOPS or the ultra high-end uh, requirements that perhaps a, a, an all-flash array might demand. Uh, but to be able to consolidate all of these into a single infrastructure is what we're really after. So where are the use cases? What kind of uh, usage deployments are the customers using the Scalarly Ring for today? It's really quite a variety. Let me demonstrate a couple of these. So one of them is an active archive. Uh, this is something that we're starting to see as an emerging category or a use case in industries like media, uh, where people generate lots of content, lots of video content and image content. Uh, typically, they've put these on tape in the past. Uh, they would like a more online accessible archive, right? Something that builds up over the course of many years, uh, but allows them to do quick retrieval uh, and really have instant access to the data. Uh, we're starting to see deployments in uh, customers in the hundreds of petabyte scale for some of these active archives. Uh, for example, we have uh, a customer at Los Alamos National Labs, uh, which is planning for the day of half an exabyte here very shortly. Uh, the web and cloud use case, we have a lot of customers doing uh, consumer messaging, consumer email deployments, uh, but now we also have video services inside the cloud. For example, uh, customers like Dailymotion are storing their, uh, their user-driven content uh, in the scalability ring. So I think the common element here is customers that today see the needs for petabytes and they quickly see their demands growing to hundreds of petabytes. Uh, but in some cases, they need to ingest the files or ingest the data over file APIs and then retrieve them over object APIs. So this sort of inner mix uh, access patterns is something that's critical for them. OK, so let's kind of start talking now a little bit about OpenStack. So we are very in line with the vision of OpenStack. Our, our world is all about software defined, and we believe that's where OpenStack is as well. So this is a really uh, nice alignment and synergy. Uh, we've actually been involved in the community for a couple of years. We actually introduced uh, our first Cinder driver uh, almost two years ago with uh, the Grizzly release and have maintained that and supported it for all the uh, incremental uh, releases going forward. Uh, what we're announcing this week actually, actually is our support for Swift. We provide a Swift connector. And uh, Giorgio will also talk to you about some of the work we've been doing in contributions for the open source. Uh, much more work is planned to integrate with all of the other services, uh, but we want to tell you about what's real today and uh, what the work that we've done. So with that, let me hand it over to Giorgio. Thank you. Uh, not sure it's working. Oh, yeah, it is. Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to walk you for some of our uh, integration points with OpenStack. So there are two main pieces, Swift as the object storage and Cinder for the block VM type storage. Uh, so you install a standard Swift deployment. can be... Red Hat can be Ubuntu, can be Mirantis, Innovance, doesn't really matter. And then you plug in uh, the Scality connectors, and you can mix and match with other type of connectors in your environment. So to zoom on Swift first, um, so the way we've done the integration, we didn't want to change Swift itself, because Swift has uh, connections to Keystone, has connection to a lot of other OpenStack projects, and we wanted to keep that intact. So what we do is we... Uh, interface below the proxy layer of Swift, and we're a method to store blobs. So we, for those who know Swift, we are part of the object controller, and we basically are a way to push the data into Scality directly, but keep the containers and authentication on an existing Swift ring. Okay? So this way, we don't change the way Swift interacts, but going for the Scality ring, you benefit from our multi-geo, erasure coding, and the scales that we can be deployed at. Okay. Um, yeah. If you look at, uh, so this is a screenshot of uh, a Scality backend to Swift. So that's a container that's backed by a Scality, and that's uh, transparent to the application. So any application that it can work on Swift can then work on, on Scality. Uh, Cinder, so Cinder is for compute for VM storage. As Paul said, we are not trying to be the fastest VM backend. What we're trying to do is to be capacity optimized. And if you deploy us for the object side, you can point your slow, large VMs to us without having to deploy any extra hardware. So the way it works is uh, we are tied into Cinder. So we are Cinder backend. And that backend uh, creates, operates on files into our system. And the files can be of any size and they look like a VM to the outside. Okay. Uh, we're working on another type of Cinder driver, and uh, I think we have a slide about that in the coming slides. 
So that's an example of, uh, of volume inside of uh, Horizon with uh, Scality as a backend. So they, they appear as uh, files into the Scality file system. And the files can be of any size, and we take care of uh, distributing the load in the backend. Uh, so this is the um, REST block driver. So it's a second version of our Cinder integration. That's going to be into Kilo. It's not into Juno yet. Uh, so what it is is uh, to be able to get a, a little bit tighter and faster integration, we wanted to create a block driver into the kernel that can talk REST in the backend. So think of it as a block driver in Linux that can talk to any object store as a, as a backend for the actual pieces of VM storage. So this is a, an overview. So it's a REST base. It does get put delete. It works with our CDMI connector as well. And what it does is uh, you install it on the uh, host side, and you create as many block devices as you need. And the block devices are backed up directly by object storage. So you kind of collapse all the different tiers because you don't need a file system. You don't need all the different layers. You go directly from the kernel block device to the object storage. So this code is uh, open source, and it's available at that URL. And uh, it's an announcement that we made yesterday. Okay. So thanks, Giorgio. So um, I think one of the key things that we wanted to convey to you is that uh, we're really try to, trying to provide a series of services uh, for data storage underneath OpenStack. Uh, all of these kind of follow this core theme of being scalable uh, to really support big workloads. Uh, you know, we're really talking about things that eventually will get into the uh, tens and hundreds of petabyte range. Uh, so the key idea here is that this is a single system that unifies the ability to do VM storage and application data together. Uh, the closest analogy, I think, in the industry, of course, is Amazon Web Services uh, with EBS. Uh, they have a variety of flavors of EPS, magnetic, and now flash. Uh, the way to think about the performance that we offer is in the range of the IOPS that the EBS magnetic offers. Uh, but to do this in conjunction with the application data as supported by S3. Uh, all of that with these multiple data protection mechanisms. And it's key to note that uh, our system is also optimized for a range of application sizes or data sizes. Uh, so some, application, some data storage systems tend to be optimized only for big data you know, megabyte and gigabyte sized objects. What we see is that typically these use, ca these use cases have a mixed workload. Uh, it's, it's often more challenging to uh, address the needs of small file use cases. So I think the key thing is that this is an, a system that can really enable low total cost of ownership. If you have very high IOPS requirements, there are purpose-built systems that do thousands and ten thousands of, v of uh, IOPS per VM, uh, but again, the TCO goes up commensurately. So we think this is a really perfect match uh, for the types of deployments that we expect to see here with big server deployments uh, and, and wide varieties of workloads in the cloud. So as Giorgio mentioned, there's three specific offerings that we have available. They're all current and available today. Uh, the ScaleAD Cinder driver can be downloaded uh, right now from the OpenStack Cinder drivers webpage. Uh, the OpenStack Swift connector for object storage is available from ScaleAD. And our REST block driver is available also uh, as an open source offering. So that's something that's today. Uh, we as a company are very, very committed to OpenStack. We're investing in a dedicated team. Um, we also uh, have that team working on these open source projects as we've talked about, and we're providing resources and time for doing code reviews as well. Uh, so we really want to be involved in the community and help uh, sort of advance uh, the state of the art as it goes into storage, but also into the related services for things like Solometer uh, with telemetry and uh, the various other services in OpenStack. So a little bit on us. The company's been around for about five years. We're privately held. Uh, R&D is based here in Paris, and we have our US operations in uh, San Francisco. Uh, we're about 90 people and uh, experiencing very rapid growth as driven by some of the use cases that we talked about earlier, uh, and really starting to see people pick up on this trend of a software-enabled storage system that decouples their choice and there gives them freedom on the, uh, on the platform side. Uh, we have a booth just over here down the hall, so come and see us if you have uh, some more detailed questions. But if you have any questions right now, we're certainly uh, happy to take them. Anybody with uh, any questions for either Georgia or myself? Okay, well, we'll stick around, so come up and see us, and uh, thanks very much for your time. <laughs>